welcome to module four of the Artisan Academy. Again, I'm Sophia. I'm here today to recap a little bit on what we discussed in module one about branding. Uh, since I last saw you guys, you, I believe, talked to Chloe, who was sharing a little bit about the process, what it's like to really create cohesion in a collection of art and a series of art in your work overall. Following her module, you all got to hear from Christine, who we adore, we admire, we love. She is a woman of many talents, and one of those talents, lucky for us and lucky for you, is that she's an incredible teacher. And kind of piggybacking on a little bit of what she discussed with you all about really busting these myths as to what it takes to be an artist and playing and finding purpose and finding joy and really finding elation in the work that you make because a point that I'll make quite a bit today is that you know the energy you put into your work is most certainly the energy that is going to be received that is going to be on the output side of what your audience takes from the work that you produce. So today, to give you a little bit of an outline, what we're going to go through is moving forward with branding. And after you've hopefully had a chance to really nail down your awareness, really become aware of what you're noticing in your life, in your images, in your work, in what inspires you. And again, hopefully you had some time to really think about the who, what, and why of the work that you do and the craft that you are creating and the craft that you're cultivating because it is certainly a journey we are with it and we are on it and we are working through it together and i think that's what's so important is to remain with it and to remain committed to the end goal but not only that to every step reaching the end goal because as anybody will tell you and as cliche as it may be it is about the journey and i think that the journey ends up informing the end product and ends up informing the end result and you know if all of our energy when thinking about branding when thinking about the craft that we're creating is solely in the production then I think it's really easy to lose ourselves in the purpose and meaning that we are creating with what we are physically creating you know again the difference between the what and the why and the what being that, that physical creation that physical craft the physical piece of art that you are sending out into the world but the why being what is the intention behind it? And you, you can't get from the start line to the finish line without running the whole race. And I generally like to talk about the experience of creating a brand as a marathon and not a sprint. And there are checkpoints, there are water points. You know, you're really, you have to pace yourself as you go through this journey and as you learn more about yourself. Because in all actuality, I really believe that the purpose of art though as controversial as it might be, is to inspire and to feel. And as I mentioned in our last video in module one that I was in, one of the most informative versions of that answer, what is the purpose of art that I've heard, is to comfort the disturb and disturb the comfortable. And so regardless of what that mission, that what or that why is in the piece, Generally, because we're sentient beings, we feel something and we feel the energy that was invested into the work and therefore we're able to receive the energy that is coming from that piece. And so while we're on this journey together, I really encourage you to continue thinking and continue reminding yourself, what is it that gets you up every morning? What is it that makes you excited to use your hands and create, use your eye to inspire? and use your voice through a visual expression because that is what this is. Art is a visual expression. I think that your style is visual expression. What you wear, how you choose to decorate, all of this is really significant in the scheme of things. And, you know, I think it's easy to think of brand building in a very secular notion, but in reality, it is informed from everything and anything that you are, you have been, you have wanted to become, you are becoming. And so with that, Today we are moving forward. We are moving forward with what's been established. We are really continuing to cultivate that awareness and we are going to take some tangible steps into furthering your brand development and your brand creation. Again, something I am incredibly passionate about, something that I really hope my passion and energy excites you about it too because at the end of the day, you can have a fantastic product, but if nobody sees it, you know, you really kind of have to question, was the purpose that I made the product solely for myself? 
or was I really wanting to inspire something in others? And in order to do so, it is crucial that you build an effective brand and an effective platform and you're targeting the effective audience that could potentially be a fantastic consumer customer base for you and the piece that you are producing. So with that, the first a concept I guess we'll say that I would like to bring attention to is color. So if you've noticed, if you started to notice what you're noticing, you will notice that color has a really large, a really large space that it takes up in this whole experience of life and living. And something that is lesser noticed is the impact that color has on us. And while some of you may come from marketing backgrounds or branding backgrounds, and this might seem like a very obvious and elementary fact to you, I would still urge you to take a look at this in a whole new light because likely last time you were introduced to these concepts, you were a different person in a different place. And so to begin with that, we're going to look at a few common colors that are used in branding and different logos that hopefully you're familiar with who have made a really strong presence in our pop culture world and our world as a participant in this crazy year of 2020. Um, and really kind of starting to realize that color and output of information or output of product actually have a lot of correspondence with one another. And you know, we can start by, I'll walk you through a simple visual exercise. So perhaps if you're comfortable, close your eyes. If not, just stay with me and we'll, we'll talk through this little exercise here. And so if your eyes are closed and I invite you to just take a deep breath and imagine yourself in a room. You're at the door frame, you're walking into a room, you're pushing through this door, and as you walk in the door, it is an all red room. The walls are red satin, the chairs are red leather, you have everything, this bold, boisterous red color. All the art is red, it's monochromatic everywhere, right? You have heavy drapes draping from these 10 foot ceilings, all red. And as you're looking around this room, take notice of how that makes you feel. Is this a relaxing sensation? Is this an empowering sensation? Perhaps it's a stressful one. Perhaps it's overwhelming because it's just a lot of one color. And now I want you to think about taking another deep breath and washing that from your mind. And now you're in an incredibly serene, all white room. Perhaps this is a meditation room. Perhaps this is a retreat somewhere, a yoga room, something that really elicits this beautiful washed over feeling of relaxation and solitude. And instead of the curtains being red, this time they're a flowy white chiffon. You see the sunlight coming through. The sunlight looks quite golden. You're looking at the furniture and it's plush and it's white and it's inviting. And it, it looks like a reprieve. Okay, so that's white. That's the essence of white and the aforementioned was the essence of red. And now if your eyes are still closed or if you're still with me, I would like you to envision a blue room, really oceanic blues, seagrass blues, greens, sea glass, different watercolors, perhaps from the Pacific coast to you know a really bright, beautiful day somewhere in the Bahamas maybe. And you know, think about this really serene blue, this really inspiring clear blue. Maybe it's a comforting color for you. And now think about all of that being washed away. There's no longer color on the wall and in comes a flood of green. So this room is filled with jungle plants and the walls are this beautiful, just deep emerald and there's an entire wall of various green stones and plants and you see palm leaves and you're just immersed in this glowing green room and you're totally enveloped by you know the greenest grass you've ever seen and you're really starting to think about during this exercise the power of color on your emotional psyche and not only that, but physically, you know, your heart rate might have risen when you walked into the red room. Your blood pressure might have dropped when you walked into the white room. And, you know, finally with this exercise, I'd like to invite you to really kind of start flipping through your mental Rolodex of different art that you've noticed and seen and different artists that you admire, different Instagram pages that have caught your eye and what colors did they use? You know, are you somebody who's really drawn towards Van Gogh and these primary colors and just very reflective of nature or maybe it's Monet where it's a little more muted and it's calming and there's pastels, uh, you know, or maybe it's something like 
like a Gustav Klimt where things are just glittering and glowing and gilded and just rich with history and dripping and wealth almost this like ancient beautiful symbol of wealth which is gold um, and so you know as we're thinking through this I just want to get you thinking and, and also feeling physically feeling the impact of these colors and starting to question you know why is X company red while you know, why company is green. A lot of banks are green. You know, we can make the association that money and green kind of goes together and it kind of symbolizes prosperity or, you know, if you're in the green or in the red in terms of finances and the red isn't always a good thing. You know, you don't want to be there. You'd rather be above the line in the green. Um, you know, green usually is a symbol of addition. Red is usually a symbol of detraction or subtraction. So with that, you know, one company that came to mind when I was first kind of working through this and thinking about whites and neutrals was the New York Times. So the Times is wanting to offer this unbiased neutral essence, if you will, and their colors are white and black because they're very, you know, no BS. They want to shoot it to you straight. They deal with the news. And, you know, with that, I think regardless of your political opinion, the New York Times is a periodical, it's a journal, it's a source of news information. And so to me, it makes sense that they would have chosen such uh, a, a theme of neutrality, if you will. Um, and, you know, whites and neutrals generally signify balance in the world of branding and marketing and um, in the world of logos. And so, you know, you can start thinking through a few others, you know, you have Apple who or Mac who used to have kind of uh, there was an orange apple on the front of their computer and then a blue and then now they've really gone to this very streamlined and sleek white black play and if you notice i love white and black <laughs> i'm wearing it actually now chloe and i decided to make white and black the core colors of our brand and that was incredibly intentional a because we felt that it really gives this air of sophistication but also trust steadfastness uh, you know, really a, a committal sense is what we want it to convey. And, you know, not really to have that mistaken with seriousness, but I think one of the things that's so beautiful about an art company playing with black and white is that then the art speaks and the colors and the art that we feature speaks. And we really can fit our brand in anywhere because whites and blacks have so many complementary colors in terms of what it looks nice with. And, you know, it doesn't create any stress or tension on the eye, um, as opposed to, you know, you can see really neon colors together that just create a tension. And it's kind of like an unspoken feeling when things are very bright or you see Halloween time coming around like we all are now. And if you've been out of the house, some of you might not have. <laughs> you have this neon orange sign and it's almost alarming. I was driving the other day. And of course, orange is associated with Halloween because of pumpkins and whatnot. But, you know, as Hallmark holidays tend to go and as all of these self-created holidays, human indicted holidays tend to go, you know, I think this orange has kind of gone overboard and it's alarming and it's like, oh, it's Halloween again. And it was, a, you know, a very clear thing to me. I didn't have to read it. I just knew, oh, neon orange. It's September. I'm sure that has to do with Halloween. And, you know, this kind of like scary, alarming sense washed over me. And so... You know, neon orange might not be the ideal color for uh, a spot. So if that makes any sense, hopefully that does. Uh, but the next color I'd like to talk about is green, uh, which is generally symbolic and indicative of a growth, of peacefulness. Um, so on the growth end, you know, you have Regions Bank, if you're from the south and know of that. There's BP Oil, which is, you know, wanting to convey the sense of growth and prosperity and wealth and abundance and you know green just biologically you know when things are growing outdoors they're green they're thriving they're happy and i think that's a really interesting play as well how our natural environment informs the social environment that we create and the way we play and interweave some of these colors into some logos and brands that we're so familiar with so another brand that comes to mind when i think of green is whole foods and, you know, with that, again, it makes sense if you're trying to exemplify this organic, rooted, grounded brand, and maybe green is a color you play with, too, as an artist. And while building your brand, while posting on Instagram or the colors that you're creating and painting with, you know, green really does, when using the right tones, can have this just very peaceful essence. Um, and I think that is because it's so indicative 
of growth in nature and in the natural biological world. You know, when we see beautiful green growing grass, it's an elation, it means springtime, it means a thriving summer, versus when we see brown, a dried, crinkling, cracking grass, that's, you know, not a symbol of growth at all. It's a symbol of rest, death, if you will, and hoping for the next cycle to come soon. And so with that, the next color I'd like to speak on is blue. And I know we walked through a blue room earlier in that little exercise, but blue is often a color associated with companies trying to convey, or brands trying to convey trust and peacefulness and usually strength of some sort. And, you know, I think of Dell computers and software Lowe's is also a blue. Oral-B is a blue, you know, your toothbrush brand. All of these companies very reflective of trustful companies, strengthful companies. You know, I, I was looking even earlier today, I have a foam roller that's blue and it's almost just kind of like an encouraging, like, oh, I'm rolling out this tight muscle and the blue subconsciously kind of gives this peaceful, non-competitive feel, which I think is important in recovery, even for our bodies. And, you know, when you think about it, the ocean, it has such healing properties. And, you know, when on a sunny day, you really see this beautiful, bright blue body of water that is such a special thing that a lot of us have emotional connections to, whether we grew up by the water, whether it's a sound machine we're used to listening to before we go to bed. Blue has a lot of subliminal subliminal power really in the way that we think about it and the way that we incorporate it and i live in the low country currently i'm in charleston south carolina and blue is very popular in homes and in art because it reflects the marsh scenes everywhere and all of these marsh scenes are you know just totally flooded with these blues and greens and just beautiful bright colors that are very serene in in the low country here and kind of contrasting that you have your purples and pinks so a lot of toy companies right like barbie is pink not only because it's kind of targeting this uh feminine concept um but it's also pink is a playful color even you know non-binary and non-gender specific pink and purple is a very fun color you know kate spade for example a fashion brand I have a glasses case from them and you know one side's this bright orange and the other side is a bright pink and their whole logo and brand is all created around you know, live life colorfully be bold be playful and these are two colors that i think are really interesting especially when used with neutrality and with whites or with creams and blushes you can really make a statement and you know i've had fun playing with those colors when doing an email announcement or an email blast something that i'm really looking to have an eye-catching effect but does not necessarily mean that that is my new brand my new color but i'm using it intentionally and so again the reason i'm going through all these colors is to talk about how you can think of incorporating them and your branding and what i mean by that is in your logo and your website design and your instagram and the work that you create because the work that you create is going to be what you post and what you share and what you feature on your website and all of the colors in there are going to be important in the essence that you're trying to convey to your audience so you know pink and purple i mentioned are creative and they're playful uh, t-mobile is another brand that uses these colors you know i mentioned barbie yahoo at one point they might still have some purple in there i believe it is purple in their search engine and you know this kind of let's get going search away like it's this again subliminal influence and it's something that we totally dismiss because we go through life totally overstimulated in 2020 totally bombarded by color and words and anything you can possibly imagine and so really i think taking this time this 20 30 40 minutes here um you know once the video ends too to really start thinking oh like even go through the apps on your phone i mean that is a really interesting exercise in all honesty you start flipping through and you think oh all my meditation and timers and sleep timers or whatever you have that's kind of um a restful purpose is generally these blues these serenity colors um whereas you know my banking app is actually green and then i have another banking app that's blue and you know blue again was trustful and strength and green is this growth and kind of like peaceful at ease um, which are all things you want to feel 
when you start thinking about your financial standing, start thinking about your bank accounts. Um, so moving from purple and pink, a little more on the color spectrum is red, which is the first room I asked everyone to visualize. And so red, as we know, usually red is the color that individuals who have no background in color theory are most familiar with. Bold, excitement, some say it triggers hunger, some say it's part of the reason behind McDonald's using red as a prominent color in their branding and their thematic logos. Uh, you know, some restaurants intentionally use red. I'm thinking of a lot of French bistros in my head right now, which I think is also reflective of their flag colors. But however, uh, a few different brands that use red vary intentionally. One, Target. Another is CNN, Coca-Cola. All brands that are really making this bold, effervescent statement and eye-catching. And, you know, I mean, even look at what we're trained when driving. Red means stop. Red means stop and pay attention, whereas green means go, grow, go, go beyond, you know, so there's really this interesting, I don't know, you know, I'm very interested in psychology and I think as an artist it's something to become interested in because of the influence you can have on your audience, but red really is woven into this society so frequently and used so often for a bold alert you know and you know cnn for example being a news station they're really trying to catch eyes catch viewers make a statement because that's what they do as a brand and as a company um so beyond red is orange and orange is a very friendly color so that's kind of the essence that you're giving off when you're talking about orange and i know i mentioned kate spade but i'll also mention nickelodeon you know a kids network that uses orange um, another one that I was thinking of is Amazon uses a lot of orange and yellow. And so, you know, I think those are really a few really good examples when thinking about how the color orange makes you feel and how we interpret the color orange and where we notice it in our surroundings. Again, go through the apps on your phone or, you know, websites that you like to look at, magazines, and take notice of the orange and take notice of where it was used. Do you think it was intentional? why, how, even food boxes, that is a gold mine for really examining these different colors. You know, you can look at a kid's food box, a kid's snack cracker box, something like that. And the colors in that are gonna be very different from, you know, maybe like an adult vegan snack, like a vegan jerky, if you will. You know, they're probably using a different color scheme because they're not trying to take the attention of a child uh, the way that and that can be a whole other conversation, the way supermarkets and branding and stores reach out to children um, through their branding and marketing and kind of put things on eye level so that kids can grab them. And so with that, the point I'm trying to make is they're eye catching colors because they want the kids in the carts to grab the boxes, right? And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Whereas, you know, an adult's Cheerios box is a little more wholesome, if you will, in terms of color. You've got your yellow, you've got your kind of blander, brand colors because uh, the product is that color. Uh, so the last color I'm gonna talk about is yellow. And yellow is generally symbolic of optimism and warmth. And a few brands that play with yellow are UPS, Sprint, we have McDonald's as I mentioned, uh, but also DHL. And so optimism I think is probably more important when talking about like the UPS and the DHL um, and the Amazon. But, you know, again, think about where you see yellow in your life. And yellow in nature is usually an optimistic thing. You have this beautiful yellow golden sun that comes up every single day that we are able to see everything by. And when you really start thinking about this color psychology, it is so cool to me. And I hope it is so cool to you too, because you can use this not only again in your artwork, but in everything you do tangential to that. Everything you post, the flyers you make, your business cards, your website development, all of that. Color is everything. Color and font and text, it's eye catching. Use it to your advantage. It is absolutely a gold mine and such, such a tool, such a tool. I mean, it is just, it, there's just so much to it. You know, when you start thinking about it, you have every single step that comes after what happens when somebody catches their eye on your logo or on your brand. There's an emotional response, there's a physical response perhaps. And then, you know, you can really drag somebody in and ask them to maintain and entertain what it is that you are offering. 
and hope that they will want to go further on their own and that you have set everything up perfectly using this tool and using all of the different things in your toolbox to be able to move forward and continue converting viewers into buyers or consistent clientele or you know consistent followers which is a wonderful thing so color was really the main thing that i wanted to focus on today and really start getting you thinking about how to incorporate that just because i feel as an artist and as a visual representation of yourself it's going to speak so much and hopefully all the work you did after module one in defining your who what why can help you inform the kind of color scheme that you want to use and the kind of images and the kind of colors that are in these images that you would like to share or the images that you would like to paint or produce or make in 3d if you're a sculptor so with that something important to think about after that is defining your core competency and with that your core competency you know, it was really something we talked about in the first module. What is it that you really think you're good at or want to be good at or love doing? Is it painting? Is it sketching? Is it monoprint? Is it photography? And, you know, think about that and think about the colors you're already using and then let these different topics that we're discussing inform your artist statement. So the artist statement is the next task that I wanted to tackle with you all today. And when thinking about developing an artist statement, I think that Hopefully by now you're in a really good place to do that because you've defined your who, your what, your why, you've selected the essence that you want to convey through your work and through your narrative with your color, with your words, with what you're good at, with what you believe in yourself. And with that, you know, when thinking about your artist statement, you want to use visual words. So you want to be able to show with your words and not just tell. And I also think it's incredibly crucial and important to stay away from big words, from unnecessarily long words, all of those fluffy words you don't need. And by reading aloud an artist statement with a friend or to yourself, I highly recommend reading it to somebody else though, because it'll kind of help you hear what you're trying to say and you can get some good feedback if it's with somebody you trust to give really sound advice. So keep it concise, keep it fairly short, keep the words small but with big meaning so don't use a word you know like superfluous for example you don't want somebody to really have to go look a word up just to understand what it is that you do as an artist um be specific you really want to think about uh what kind of influences your work has from you from your life uh what that what that work conveys you really want to think about the objective of your work and you want to kind of categorize yourself. And that hopefully is a little obvious because you like to categorize yourself as being a ceramic artist or being an oil painter. Um, so, you know, between now and the next time we speak on another module, artist statement is something I encourage you to look up, look up artist statements of artists that you admire and start playing with it. You know, it's essentially this one little blurb of who you are and how you are and what you're bringing to this world as an artist and what you're bringing, again, incorporates your who, what, and what. And you're able to kind of blend all of these and make this beautiful two to three, four sentence paragraph about who you are and what you do and why you do it and who you do it for. And it's a beautiful thing that I think can be really compelling uh, as a buyer and as a viewer to a beautiful piece of artwork. So lastly, I wanted to talk a bit about promotion because that's kind of, to me, the next sensible step that you would approach when thinking about my brand and, you know, I'm building it, I have my logo, I have my website, I have my craft, I have the what I, that I'm selling, and, you know, now I have an artist statement, a little short biography, if you will, a resume if you have one, meaning shows you've been in, in the past or if you're just doing this for fun, then hopefully this is a good exercise and no resume needed, of course of the promotion, you know, think about promoting you and your work in places that make sense for you. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you've never been on Twitter and you're 65 years old, maybe you shouldn't be promoting on Twitter. But if you're on Facebook all the time and your friends are there and they read local magazines, promote your work there. Buy an ad if that's something that you have available to you in a local paper or a local magazine or a local art brochure. If that's really somewhere you feel that your who is residing and reading, uh, they're reading those magazines. But you know, to me, I think that a hot topic right now is Instagram and virtual promotion, digital promotion. It's really such a tool. It's free, free, 
remark thing and that is just something that is really you know just a compact gift that can go so far word of mouth is great of course but you know we're building a lot of visual components to this brand so i really urge you to get in as many places as you can really spread the word shower your town your city uh different websites any anybody you can really ask that you think aligns with the who of what you're selling and what you're making ask them to promote it for you you know ask close friends ask good family friends uh if family's great too hopefully they're supporting you through this uh it's really just there's so many options here um and we will be getting further down the rabbit hole if you will with all of the promotion and promotional techniques but i wanted to kind of think a little carrot if you will again if we're on this whole rabbit rabbit theme and really kind of start thinking about okay how am i going to start promoting all this where am i noticing that my favorite artist promotes and you know again back to the color theory use that dangling carrot that orange carrot as a, a symbol of play for you and friendliness and that's really kind of the energy you're wanting to invest in this so keep chasing that keep thinking about promotion really start thinking about this color theory experience and notice the colors that you're noticing and write down that physical emotion that you feel related to each color and you know maybe neutrals is what you want to push and you make beautiful neutral watercolor paintings and that's what your instagram is going to look like and that neutrality is really going to play into your brand and your image uh, and lastly you know i i mentioned lastly but this can be lastly 2.0 be flexible with yourself and with this journey and with this marathon it is not a sprint you might play with one color scheme you might play with one artist statement and you might totally flip and totally want something new and different and it didn't resonate with you but that's what this period is this is all play this is fun this is the incubation period before you take off and you rocket towards the stars doing what you are so passionate about and so want to share with this world so you know with that i just want to remind you to remain consistent and clear in your vision and the essence that you're trying to convey and the work that you're trying to make in the series that you are producing and have fun with it tinker with it explore look around definitely 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 use your environment to influence and inform this whole process whether that is your physical environment other artists you really adore and love following influencers you really like brands you really respect instagram layouts that catch your eye notice what you notice and continue to remind yourself of that and continue to have fun with this and hopefully this gave you a little taste into where you can grow and expand your brand so i so enjoyed speaking to you all this module four and again i'll have a little handout as i did last time attached with this video if you have any questions feel free to reach out but i can't wait to see what you guys create thanks so much see you next time